Hmm, no dinosaurs being born today, but there is a particularly scary looking log. Perhaps this was the dinosaur. Some massive beak with some eye. Okay, I'm making things up here. Hello everybody and welcome back to Charwell. So, I'm just going to go and put this common harvest back in the yard where it came from. Today what we're going to do is put in some poplars. Now, this series is all about using all of the different crop types, or planting all the different crop types available, uh, which would be seen in this country, this is the UK. So, we are doing things like poplars, we're doing root crops, we put in some sugar beet not long ago. And we're going to do, well, like I said, anything which we can sort of do without it looking silly. Like We wouldn't want to do, for example, uh, cotton, because it's certainly not commercially grown in the UK. So, um, yeah, I think this is all good. Today, it is time to get those poplars in the ground. So, somewhere down here, there is a chainsaw. A chainsaw driving a tractor. He is subsoiling the fields because what we're going to do is we're going to put poplars into probably just one of these. Uh, it would be quite a, a large area for, for both of them. The other field can be probably something else. Maybe even trees. I don't know. So what we're going to do is go over to the store and pick up a Fent 4S and potentially a Fent Farmer 300 CI because these have both recently been put on ModHub and it would be very nice to use these. The Fent 4S is just perfect for small areas. Uh, so for example, putting in the poplar is absolutely fantastic. We do need to have a rotating beacon uh, for the simple reason of uh, it looking good really. Um, we are going to be trundling down the road so it is wise to have one. As for the wheel setup, yeah, we'll, we'll go big. <laughs> the R34s. Uh, we need to put global uh, positioning on that one there. So that's £1,536. We are just going to lease these, so it's next to nothing, the money coming out of our bank account. And um, then, yeah, just the just the planters. Ah, oh, this is still over here. I'll, I'll return that very soon. Um... Yeah, so you might think, well, you could just do this with your other tractors, but these are so compact that it's just going to make everything so much easier. Turning around and just, you know, getting in all those tight corners in the field. It's a bit of an awkward shape field for this sort of thing anyway, so it's all going to help. Right, uh, forestry equipment. We have this one here. Almost costs as much as the tractor itself. And whilst I'm here, I will also load them up. Sadly, we can only put one pallet on at a time. I have seen the mod where you can attach three of these planters together. Uh, definitely worth doing if, you, if you're doing a really large scale planting session. I've just realised that is a really interesting... Oh, whoa, I didn't turn off the, <laughs> the speed walking. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting exhaust. Comes down from the engine, then goes towards the driver, and then comes out the side. Hmm. At least it points away from you. There's nothing worse than driving a cabless tractor where the fumes are going in your face. That's horrible. Do the same thing for this tractor. And I forget how quickly it consumes these, but I think they do last for a little while, so I don't think we need to go crazy with the buying of the uh, the poplars. It would seem unnecessary to. Believe it or not, this tractor is 80 horsepower. It's a real beast. If I was to just have a guess, I would have probably guessed 40 or 50 horsepower. They're not bad. If they had a cab, actually, they would look considerably larger. Now, sadly, we don't have Follow Me installed. It would have been good. But it's there waiting for Chainsaw when he's done the subsoiling. Um, I'm just going to prepare everything. Why does this make me feel like I'm in FS09 or something? Don't know, but I like it. <laughs> it's funny, because you'd think, you think that going back to FS09 would be a weird thing to want to do. I suppose it, it's overall a relatively basic track, so that's probably why I get those feelings. But no, it's it's nice to uh, to get that sort of feeling. 09, although looking back was not good, it is um, a very nostalgic game for me and for everybody who played it. After all, it's so interesting to see the progression of the Farming Simulator series. You can see how it improves on every game. 
I think one thing which would be very nice to work towards would be buying this farm down here. Now we do have over £300,000, which is a good step in the right direction. I don't know how much it would cost us, but just down there is a really nice farm. Plus it has silage pits as well, which will come in handy. And since we're not actually even halfway through this series yet, it would give us plenty of time to uh, to properly put it to good use and, you know, explore the fields around it. I will just take a look at it, actually, because uh, there's no rush here. I can't start planting until it's been subsold. Just a really quick look. Yeah, we've got these silage bits over here. At least, I think it's a silage pit. I'm not sort of looking at a, a slurry pit or something. I'm like, I, I, no, it's got a tyre on it. It must be a silage pit. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. This would be good. This would be very nice. Uh, so how much is it? It's always the <laughs> deciding factor, the price. It is... Uh, it could, Well, actually, I say ah, uh, but that is actually a very good deal. You get all those fields, plus the farm, for £441,000. And we have 306 so we're getting close. That is a really good deal. Wow. Oh, and you also get a piece of the train line. What a privilege. Yes, I think that it's... I'll discuss it with Chainsaw. He'll be watching this video anyway, once it's been published. So, um, yeah, it'll be uh, definitely something to consider. And we'd have more space, too, to put our machinery. I like the way this map does allow you to block by. So you're buying blocks of the of the map. Sometimes I like that idea, sometimes I don't. It just really does come down to the map itself. Uh, usually if it's got loads of massive fields, I prefer just to be able to buy one field. But if, there, if there's lots of small fields, block buying is good. Very good. Okay, that field's almost finished. Massey Ferguson flying along. So yeah, I'm hoping to start my survival challenge this Friday. Hopefully. It's not sort of set in stone, it's just I want to do it then. It really comes down to how much time I have with the planning and if I'm happy with what I plan. Uh, like I'm going to set out a few different things, like the machinery and the idea which I have. If I don't like it, then it's going to take me a bit longer to decide. But that doesn't mean the end of Sandy Bay. Sandy Bay will still be Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll just take this tractor back. It's been here since the previous episode. And yes, once Sandy Bay is finished at episode 40, we're going to be on to the fantastic Purbeck Valley Farm, which I really can't wait for. I was looking over my channel, and it was actually nine months ago that I did the first look for Purbeck Valley Farm. But it is now out for everybody, so I absolutely can't wait. It's going to be very interesting, especially as it's going to have all those Naveswell Farm feelings with it, because uh, it is, it's essentially Naveswell Farm extended, extended because <laughs> there was a Naveswell Farm extended very interesting set in Dorset I believe the crop is growing as well that we put in, in this field just here a couple of episodes ago I, I subsoiled it, and then we drilled it Chainsaw put some lime on there and it has now germinated. Uh, there is, I think there's a baler behind me. <laughs> I should probably take a look. Yeah, there is. Um, there isn't actually much space. I put it in front of the grain. And then we can't be messing around anymore. We must get planting. We'll leave that there. Okay. So. Here we are. I'll take this one over there very quickly. We'll jump cut. Yes, the other field, which is next to the poplar field, is going to be sunflowers. That would be a fantastic crop. We haven't done sunflowers for a long time. And they're worth quite a bit. Or the other way around. We'll do poplar in 26. It's a more manageable field. It's a better shape. It's actually larger, though, as well. I don't know if the whole field is going to be poplar. But there we are. Since Chainsaw has the whole field yet to, uh, to subsoil, what I'll do is I'll actually go and plant that field there with the sunflowers. 
So I'll just go and get things set up very quickly. Well, pretty good timing. We have both finished at the same time, which means the field over there is all ready to be planted. You don't actually have to uh, subsoil, I don't think, for the poplars, but we might as well. It makes everything look neater, and I suppose it might increase the yield. But anyway, there we go. The sunflowers are in. So I wish I could do this somewhere on some grassland or something, but we're going to have to do it in the field. We're just Lower it down, put the drawbar out, and get it attached the other way. But you've probably noticed I'm quite a fan of this tractor. I do like using it. But that's also why I'm trying to mix things up a bit by getting other modded tractors as well. As for the 300, the Fen 300, um, I'm not too sure if we're going to find the opportunity to use it today. We'll probably buy it in a future episode. The only disadvantage with this planter is you sort of need the same amount of space as a cruise ship to turn it around and, and to turn. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. It's just about enough space. Really tight. Anyway, I said we'd take a look at our field just over there, so we will do. And I've popped this back in the shed. This is a nice farm. I definitely want to keep this one. The idea of getting the other farm would be as well as. Besides, this farm here comes with all the surrounding land. Right, so when I took this out of the shed there was a bit of an issue. <laughs> it had got a bit stuck on the windrower, so the windrower has been rotated. I'm probably going to have to push it back. Yes. Uh, let's just pull that round. There we go. Be weird to be so strong in real life. But I suppose very handy. I'll leave that there. I think we'll keep the whole tractor attached. As opposed to <laughs> half the tractor. Uh, no, we'll just keep the tractor attached. And the lights have been on for a while. Is that the one? No, is that, is that the switch for the inside there? I'm not too sure. Could be for the door. However, I can't see anything else. There we go. Okay, yeah, so uh, the, uh, the field over here is looking good. It's growing nicely. It's just putting the land to better use. Uh, before it was just wasteland. It really was. It wasn't being used for anything. Okay, let's tab through. We'll get back to one of those tractors. This one here. The 4S. And we can finally start planting. I'm going forwards, but I seem to be going backwards. What have I done? What have I done? Okay, well, removing the planter and putting it back on again seems to have fixed that one. Interesting. We are very close to the store, so it's probably worth just going back to the store to get another crate when we're ready. I just don't know how many we need. I think we should probably pay as we go. Right. So if I start on the far side, this is going to take a while. Um, that would be the best thing. We need to have some space. So I think here is going to be the furthest along we'd want to go. And even here is kind of 
well, a bit close to the edge. It's not even worth doing actually there. We're not going far enough. Hmm. Anyway, I'll continue and hopefully eventually it starts to look good. Oh, what was it doing? I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe the planter just isn't really compatible with it. it. It is quite big. But I'll crack on. We might only need one crate, looking at it. All is Right, so we've almost run out, so I'm just going to see if a worker can do this. I don't want it to make a mess. I'm going to go and fetch some more, but let's just see how I did, because I wasn't using GPS. I've been trying to practice my straight lines. That's alright. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so yes, we obviously do need probably two more crates over here. I didn't realise we were going at different angles. But we are, so that's going to make it interesting. Um, we'll probably just leave a triangle or something. But um, yeah, this is the important bit. What is it going to do? Please do go right at the edge. But it's not really a problem at this end, it's a big problem at the other end. And then you're going to reverse over everything. Okay. very muddy. The tractor keeps getting stuck. Well, we'll just have to hope for the best. I'll keep tabbing to it just to make sure it's not you know, destroying everything. Jump into this, and we should have a pallet fork somewhere. That tractor has a pallet fork, which means the other pallet fork is out here. There we go. Uh, so, we'll go and pick them up. I should be able to carry two, hopefully. And we'll deliver them to the field. Well, everything seems to be going well, with the exception of the uh, the angling which I mentioned before. It is true, there is a, a difference in angle, but I think we're just leaving your triangle is going to be fine. The amount of purposes that we're going to have, it's uh, it's amazing. I think James will just run out that second, didn't he? It's good timing. You can have the one which is about to fall off. It made it. Take the top one. There we go. And this one over here must be almost empty. I don't know if we're going to need another pallet. I don't think we do. I hope we don't. It's looking good. It's a big job. Uh, the one thing about the worker is it is going to do a better job than me because it is essentially GPS. It's uh, going to be perfectly straight. But I still think mine was okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't usually use GPS because I'm still trying to practice my straight lines. One day I might be able to plant these 
crops as straight as GPS can do. It would be amazing if I can, but no, that would be asking quite a bit. Anyway, yes, we'll just uh, await the arrival of the empty planter. Just 7%, so probably make it back up here again. No, it will do. Yeah, it'll make it back up here. Maybe twice. Right, here's a competition for you with no prize. How many times did the man driving my tractor change the colour of his shirt? It seems to be quite a few times. Okay, so yeah, it's very slow with the work, although it does a good job. It is slow because it messes around so much. It just ended up way over there in the other poplars. But the end is near. So I'm going to take over again when it gets to the top and just finish off. But yeah, it's looking really good. I just can't even begin to imagine how long it's going to take to bale. I think we'll probably bale it. Um, I just wish that the crops were worth more. Well, wood chips. Wood chips are just worth next to nothing. finished and it actually really has blended quite well I think it's not bad it's gonna be quite easy to harvest because all you have to do is just harvest one side at a time once you've taken all the ones in that direction you can then take the ones in that direction I just wish there was a bigger machine to do it with well the machine you do it with is actually quite big but yeah it can only take in one row at a time I'm flying around everywhere anyway yeah this is uh, leased so it needs to be returned Unless we're keeping it for tree planting in the future, I'm not too sure. Uh, but then again, we could probably use the Fent 300 for that, it'd be more interesting. So, I'm just going to go and take it back, and then we're going to call it a day. But soon, we're going to have some poplar to do. And some sunflowers. So that's much more interesting than what it was before. Before it was just two canola fields. Yeah, sunflowers and poplar, definitely much more interesting. We've just got to change the price for poplar it's just too low, what, what would it be, 150 or something? it might vary from map to map, I am on easy economy um, ooh ah now this this could be because I'm hosting actually and I changed my value of wood chips 850, that is wood chips, isn't it? I get so confused with these icons. Yeah, it is. Well, if it's not, somebody will tell me. Um, 
Yes, definitely worth getting those global company uh, icons. They are so much better. Well, as it turns out then, we are actually going to make quite a bit of money. Very good to hear. I'll just trundle back to the store. They can have their machine back. As for the slipping around, it was either because the machine on the back is too big, or because I maybe put the wrong wheels on. I don't know if it's clashing with something. Hard to say. Probably it's just too big. I mean, it looks pretty big. The Fen 300 would have most likely been a better choice. That was 80 to 100 horsepower, something like that. This one is 80. And there we go. So thank you so much for watching everybody. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you want to see Chainsaw's video, the link is down below in the description. But until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.